Hello and welcome to yet another Blender tutorial. This time we are going to have fun with making materials, generating a bunch of randomly distributed, insert any node editor thing here. For example, it can be randomly distributed procedural textures like uh, flowers, or it can be image textures like we are going to do in this tutorial. So in this case I only manipulated a uh, random hue for the sleeves and for any other, other procedural textures that you can make you can randomly tweak any parameter you want like for example in this case I tweak the petals count for example the, on this one you can see it's 3 on this one it's above 6 um, on this one it is 4, 6 and so on. You can see they, are random, they have random petals count and they have random color and random position. This is what we are going to make here. So right now as of 13th of November 2019 it is only possible to use these features in 2.82 build, nightly build, but you may be watching this in the future when this is already a stable build and you already have 2.82 and an even more fresh build. So make sure that your Voronoi texture node has has parameters called randomness and it has an output called position. These are the key features that we are going to need to produce this kind of result. So let's increase our randomness and see and look here. We are going to see how our leaves are getting randomly distributed. Let's zoom in. And is approximately what we are going to get. Let's start from a fresh file. Now I'll go ahead and delete the default cube. Add another viewport window here. Shift A and add a plane, and finally switch this window type to shader editor. Close this end panel and create a new material for our plane. Make sure the plane is selected, and also we are going to get rid of those. We want to see only the plane and let's also hold Z and move our cursor up and release Z so it switches to rendered mode and we're going to delete our principal shader we are not going to use it I want to just purely demonstrate you how to distribute any kind of textures we may create or use so let's create an image texture and plug it into the surface output of the material. Now let's add a texture coordinate node and plug a, in, a, the object uh, output of it to the input of the vector of our image texture so that uh, it no longer uses the UV coordinate system, it now uses the object coordinate system and our textures will be displayed in 2D uh, using our X and Y axis. So let's open a image and I'm going to use, I have a folder of autumn leaves here 
and I'm going to use a random one so let me close my eyes and randomly pick one okay this one so we see it added an image and in fact it added four images which we don't want so let's set it to clip we only want it to show up once at specific coordinates now let's think about it a bit we want to generate a bunch of random points across this plane and somehow put an image texture, this image texture, to each of the points and maybe some add some variation like I did in the preview how can we do it? well, it turns out in 2.82 it's not that complicated so we have a procedural texture that generates a bunch of random points across our texture space so this texture is called Voronoi texture and before 2.82 which added a, a bunch of new nodes here uh, and a bunch of new things like 4D textures this wasn't possible because we didn't have this which is let's take a look at this this is let's plug in object coordinate uh, into our texture coordinate and let's take a look at this position vector what does it do? so we can see for each individual for each individual cell it creates a, a it creates a vector or a point which is around the center and it returns that point to us so let's take a look at pure object, object coordinates and let's see the difference Yeah. So now we have the coordinates of each randomly distributed point, and maybe we can subtract the original coordinates from it. So let's use the new node called vector math and subtract either of that either Voronoi texture's position uh, either the points position from the original coordinates or the opposite uh, doesn't matter it's going to be to invert our texture but yeah, it, yeah you, you're going to see the same result so now let's plug in back our leaf texture into the surface output and let's now plug in our new coordinate system into our texture uh, coordinates and we see nothing and why is that? well maybe we we may swap a well it doesn't help so what is the problem here well it, this texture it is kind of huge for this new coordinate system uh, that is only only in our cells so let's scale let's duplicate the vector math node and 
to scale and whenever we increase the scale our leaves will become smaller and now uh, we will see that the leaf is going is hiding behind the edge so we want to shift it so we will use the traditional method for it using the mapping node and change the location and we can also change the rotation but I would prefer so something like this is good enough we have a bunch of randomly distributed leaves and that's it okay so now how do I do a variation between each of those leaves and for that we need to have a random parameter for each cell and we do have that in this color output of the Warnoi texture uh, there is an attribute oh sorry we need to separate HSV there is an attribute called hue that is go that goes from 0 to 1 and let's rotate each leaf randomly along the z-axis and using our random parameter let's multiply it by say 9999999 that's okay and great so now our, our leaves are rotated in a random direction well okay so I noticed that I noticed a small problem here because of uh, because of the uh, float limits it has to be not greater than uh, some particular value or otherwise it gets uh, rounded to nearest 45 degree angle so 9000 will look okay so let's see yeah this is pretty a random distribution and random rotation now we want random hue uh, for each leaf yeah so let's add a color hue saturation node and we'll plug in the hue from here to here but wait wait this tweaks our hue too much so by default it is 0 0.5 so let's let's scale the way we tweak by some value so this is the original value we add it with let's say for now zero it's going to give the same uh, result as before so now we shall multiply this with a hue multiply and this is how much we are going to affect our hue so yeah let's decrease this but we want to not only add it but also subtract so our hue needs to change to vary not only in the right direction not only in the positive direction but also in negative so let's subtract 0 
because this hue it goes from 0 to 1 we want it to go from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and now we want to divide by 0 0.5 so that's going to give us from negative 1 a value of from negative 1 to, to 1 and we'll mu multiply it with a certain value the way we want to tweak yeah something like this maybe we, we want to scale it up a little bit but add also that will also cause some problems because our leaf in some cells it will hit the border of the cell and we don't want that so maybe we'll if we want more leaves maybe we'll have to maybe we'll have to add several uh, add this to in an old group and add several of those on top of each other using this alpha parameter and in the end we'll get we'll get our plane completely covered with leaves if we add more of them that's all for today thank you for watching have a fun time playing with blender procedural texture generation and see you in the next video